啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦。Stryker proves his admirable prowess with a mighty blow deep to the scouts in the garden. Fine ginger, sir. Well struck. It's a festive day as the Lafayette Square Cyclones host a match with the St. Louis Perfectos. Two fine club nines indeed. Amidst halcyon surroundings that include an untroubled pond, near a bronze tribute to the father of our country and surrounded by the finest architecture of the age, these vigorous sportsmen engage in the gentlemanly game of baseball. No ruffians allowed. That's baseball, two words, baseball played by men whose names were given to them by their teammates, not their parents. There are no babes or shoeless Joes, but close. Read me the names of your team here. Uh, we've got the Juggler, uh -huh. Moose, Twig, Shutterbug, Tavern, Bookworm, Patches, Chuckwagon, and Luke. This is the Greater St. Louis Vintage Baseball, two words, Vintage Baseball Historical Society. Here the game is played as it was in 1870, 1880, give or take a decade or two, a gentleman's game conducted according to the highest standards of sportsmanship, courtesy, and respect. A game for the gentry on a Sunday afternoon. They're up by nine runs and they decided not to take the extra base when it was hit to the, uh, to the outfield. So. Very thoughtful. Yes. It's a gentleman's game, sir. When was the last time you heard a statement like that at that other place they play baseball in St. Louis? That place where baseball is one word. Heavy blouses, long trousers, with the requisite bandana in so many back pockets. The hurler puts it across the center of home base, or wherever the batsman prefers. How's that for sportsmen like? Show me the ball for a second. Yeah. I mean, it's, is that stitched like a baseball? Yeah. It is, but it's not it's stitched a, like a baseball. It's called a lemon peel stitch. And it's one piece of leather that's laid around the ball like this and then stitched in a cross like this. Is that the way it was stitched a long time ago? This is how it was originally stitched in 1860. If that ball is caught by a gloveless fielder in the air or on the first bounce, it's a dead hand and out. Three swings and a batsman is out, but no balls or strikes are called. Players on the field make their own call. However, an arbiter from one of the teams does stand by for close ones. If you guys want me to make a call, he looked like he was safe. Sometimes they'll let the cranks decide. Cranks, that's what they call the spectators, the fans. No swearing, spitting, scratching, no consumption of alcohol, and of course, no wagering. All of those will draw a hefty fine. That's a 25 cent. The language of this game has more color than Sparky Anderson's vocabulary. A player is a ballist. The outfield is the garden, patrolled by scouts. To smack a line drive is to hit a corker. When a striker successfully circles the bases and ends at the round home base, he scores an ace and asks permission for his run to count. It's a gentleman's game, remember? May I tell him ace, sir? You may tally, but that's so not in my ear. This game is different, all right. It's, it's a game. They play baseball. They don't work baseball here. Gentlemen. That was pretty good. <laughs> what we're trying to do, in addition to, to have a real competition between teams, is to do living history as well and show the people who come to these games what baseball looked like in the 1860s. The, the competition is, it's not the end of the world, it's, it's not quite so intense as you generally see in you know, even recreational softball. It's gentlemen. Of course. Cyclones have nearly gotten square with their opponents in the late innings. They, they almost tied it up. But alas, this match is a St. Louis Perfectos thing. If you're waiting for the surprise ending to this story, where the hurler brushes a batsman back, or, or there's a brouhaha with the umpire, or the bench is clear for a fight, sorry, it's a gentleman's game, remember?